I've mentioned before that I need to get better at uh, making reference to our work on the foreign field, uh, that we would all keep ourselves stirred in prayer for their, our brothers and sisters there in Kenya. Uh, keep Pastor Forb in your prayers, if you would. He's been dealing with some health issues of late. Uh, we know that Jesus is the Lord, our healer. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Amen? His word is life to those that find it, health to all their flesh. Let's believe, Father, for wellness for our brother. Amen? Amen. And generally keep in prayer the good work there among the churches in, in Kenya. The reports are always a blessing. The people continue to grow in grace and in their knowledge of God's will for their lives. And uh, thankful to Father for the fellowship that we enjoy with them. I would uh, maybe take the opportunity to remind you all to, to uh, prayerfully consider participating in one of the, the missions trips that we go on each summer. I know that it seems at this point a long ways away, but not too soon to be thinking uh, in that direction or prayerfully considering a trip to the foreign field and a visit to our brothers and sisters there. Amen? Amen. Anybody have one of the memory verses from recent weeks that you'd like to share with us? Stephanie, first hand up. Thank you. Hmm? And then the reference again. Second Timothy? Second Timothy. Watch. Who else has one? Micah. First Timothy. Amen. Thank you. Who else? Who else? Sure, Juliana. Luke 19.10. That's a powerful truth, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. He came to seek and to save the lost. That's all of us. That's where we were. We were lost, dead in our trespasses and sins. And we were sought out by God Almighty, our maker. We, as part of the human race, had rebelled and, and uh, rejected uh, the life and the love, uh, God's witness of himself. But God sought us out. He didn't allow us to, he didn't leave us to go off on our own without him pursuing us. He sought us out and has drawn us to himself and caused us to, to hear his voice and now to know and believe the love that he has for us. Amen? Amen. 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 Ever thankful to him for that. You can turn with me in your Bibles to the 2 Timothy chapter 2 passage. We wanted to pick it up there. I know we touched on that one, spent just a few minutes on it on Sunday morning. But I wanted to return to that subject. We're talking about why the word. And of course, on that, we look to the word to find out why the word, don't we? Yep. The word tells us why the word. It's the Bible that tells us why we should give attention to what the Bible has to say. And the Holy Spirit bears witness in our spirit. These are words of life. These words are truth, alive and powerful. They pierce, they go beyond the, the, the mind, the realm of the intellect, into the soul, into the heart of a man, into his, his spirit, into his innermost being. Beautiful passage there in Hebrews where it speaks of the word, a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, just like a, a sword that cuts through, goes into the deepest parts of our being. And in its ministry, it helps us sort out between truth and error. Sometimes our emotions can, can seem very strong and would tend to direct our actions, but then the truth of God's word shines light on our emotions, sometimes correcting them because we're off course and, and the word of God is the lamp to our feet and the light to our path. Amen? It's the word that tells us how we're to feel and corrects us if our feelings, if our perceptions, if our beliefs are incorrect. The word of God, alive and powerful. How thankful we are. Well, the fourth point, and we'll jump right in. The fourth point that we wanted to consider, why the word, is, is this one. Saints are to be equipped to do the work of the ministry. And how directly this verse 15 speaks to that. He says, study or be diligent to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It is fully God's intention that all his people would be his workmen. And in order to be good workmen, you need to know the word of God. 
We are incapable of bringing effective ministry to whether it be to our families, our brothers and sisters in the Lord, or to a lost and dying world if we don't know what the Bible has to say. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Amen? The world has their way of thinking. The way that seems right to a man. What do you do with that? You've got somebody standing before you. They seem sincere. They're, they're educated. They're intelligent. They're, <clears throat> they're successful, perhaps. And they have their belief system. How do you bring ministry to them? From the word of God. What does the Bible has to, have to say on how life ought to be lived? What does the Bible have to say regarding what's valuable and what is not valuable? What is true and what is error? How do, how do people know? You know. The Bible tells you. And God expects everyone, is to be, every one of us to be well equipped in our knowledge of the word of God so that we can bring ministries, so that we can be workmen who rightly divide, skillfully handle the word of truth. That's God's intention. The study of the word of God, the memorization of the word of God, the, the effective use of the word of God in, in bringing ministry to others should not be considered something that's optional for the particularly zealous, the studious, the, the ones who are, I don't know, they're, they're just more into their religion. We've been created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Amen? Amen. We're to be workmen who don't need to be ashamed. Call yourself a Christian? What makes you a Christian? Somebody challenges your faith? Do you know why you believe what you believe? The biblical basis for it? What's the authority that you stand upon? They have their beliefs. And unfortunately, uh, we, knowing as much of the word as we do, are rarely in a position where we would find ourselves not ready to give an answer from the scripture. But that's not always the case, and we should be ever looking to hone our skills, as it were, in our ability to handle the word of truth. Amen? Uh, take a half step back. You're talking with somebody, and they say, say, well, I just believe that if you're good, you'll get into heaven. You know how to respond to that, don't you? You say, the Bible says, it's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but it's according to his mercy that he saves us. That's the way you respond, isn't it? Because the Bible says, or they say, well, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty good person. I think that, you know, God will get it, let me in. And you say, man's righteousness is as filthy rags, says the Bible. You respond to those commonly rendered uh, reasons for why somebody believes that they're right with God or would be welcomed into heaven if there is one. You know those, but sometimes uh, I, I trust you do and are ready always to give an answer. Amen. But sometimes people put forward other arguments, and we need to know what the Bible has to say on the subject. Well, tonight we're talking about the subject of knowing what the Bible has to say on different subjects. Amen? Amen. A passage such as this. Here God teaches us that it is his intent that we know his word so that we could be good at ministering his word. That's why you read your Bible. It's not just to learn another memory verse or to fulfill the, uh, the daily quota. You as a student of God, a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, want to learn God's heart, God's ways, God's word. So you're diligent. This study is, as, as you know, or as we've, we've mentioned before, and I believe you know, it's not just book study. Not just book study. We've completed uh, another good week of basketball camp. And through the course of the week, Jim is, is, uh, is reminding the kids that if they want to get better at basketball, they can do so on their own. They don't need a basketball camp. They don't even need a hoop to develop their skills. If the kids were to go on out and get a book on the subject, they would be limited in their ability to develop their skills with the book only. Right? Yeah. They need to pick up a ball and use it. Don't they? Yeah. Well, the Christian gets better at rightly dividing the word of truth by rightly dividing the word of truth, by ministering the word. You get better at it by using it, exercising, practice, ministering it to ourselves and the situations that we face, the 
Scripture speaks of speaking to yourselves and to one another. Amen? Yeah. Why be downcast, O oh my soul? That man's talking to himself, isn't he? Why are you down, soul? Why are you discouraged? Why are you disquieted within? Put your hope in God. We need to bring ministry to ourselves, not infrequently. Very commonly, opportunities to bring ministry to our families. Prayer for needs, a word of encouragement, a word of correction. Do this because the Bible says so. This is what the Lord teaches. Parents bringing up our children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. We're not just teaching them to do what you're told. Why? Because I said so. Let's go beyond that. Because God says so. Because his word teaches us that children are to obey their parents. Amen? Amen. We bring ministry from the word. Of course, in the training of children, it's the rod and reproof that brings wisdom. Amen? Amen. The word of God instructing, making wise the simple. We have occasion to bring ministry to our brothers and sisters just a, a testimony, a, a, a word in season that can help them on their way, can edify them, can strengthen them, can bring understanding. Don't think that just because uh, a fellow brother or sister in the Lord has known the Lord as long as you have and they sit under the same teachings, they've got the same Bible that you've got. Don't think that there's not room for you to bring exhortation, admonition, instruction to them. The Lord's always providing those opportunities, isn't he? Always presenting those opportunities for us to bring a word to a brother or a sister that could help, sometimes instruct, sometimes correct. In order to do that effectively, skillfully, we need to know what the Bible has to say. Amen? We should be diligent in our study, and our attention to reading the Word of God and learning Bible principles, Bible doctrine. Give attention to the doctrine, the Bible says. The passage that was just quoted there from 1 Timothy 4. Amen? Give yourself wholly to them. Your profiting will appear to all. And in doing so, you will both save yourself and those that hear you, those that have an ear to hear the doctrine that you live and bring ministry from. In order to be able to do that effectively, we need to give diligent attention to the Word of God. That can be reading your Bible. It can be uh, paying close attention to teachings such as this. Being serious enough about your approach to the Word of God that you sit there and pay attention. Stay awake. Stay focused. Take some notes. Take those notes home and go back over the passages of Scripture, reviewing your notes. Listening to, you know, Pastor Scott teaching. Go back, listen to these teachings. They're available now. We've entered, as most of you know, the 21st century, finally. Yeah? How about that? <clears throat> and these, are, these teachings are available online for our edification. Time quiet in the presence of God with his word open before us. Saints are to be equipped to do the work of the ministry. We don't want to be ashamed. We don't want to be incapable, ill-prepared to bring oh, the, the, uh, the out-of-the-ordinary situation <clears throat> may arise, but that's going to be the rare exception. Most of the time, the stuff that we encounter is common to man. Amen? Common. Let's be ready to bring effective ministry from the word, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly, <clears throat> uh, from the Amplified again, briefly, correctly analyzing, accurately dividing, rightly handling, skillfully teaching the word of truth. Amen? Go with me over to Mark 16. Touch on a few rather quickly. We'll touch it, look to the Mark 16 and the Matthew 28. Verse 15 of Mark 16, 
I believe, speaks to all believers. Jesus says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I don't believe that Jesus is speaking exclusively to those that are gathered about him uh, immediately prior to the ascension. I believe this is a word that speaks to every believer in every age. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We're instructed by God to share the gospel freely with those that he has put in our lives. Amen? Our family members, saved, unsaved, of course. The, the, the neighbors, the people with whom we do business, where we shop, where we work. Sometimes just hitting the streets, just knocking on doors or, or, or looking to talk with the, the total stranger, the passerby out on the streets. Go into all the world and preach the gospel in order to do see a need to know what the gospel has to say. If somebody were to ask you this, this, this evening, right now, what's the gospel? Gospel. We were flipping through the channels the other night and happened to uh, flip uh, while they were, there was a, a gospel music on. And I mean, wow. It's, and I had to explain to Marianne, oh, no, this is, she's, she thought it was um, Christian. Gospel it must be Christian. I had to explain to her, that's just a genre of music. You got country western, you got gospel, you got, you know, doesn't have to necessarily have to anything to do about God. But if I ask you what the gospel is, do you know? Can you give a good, succinct presentation of the gospel? Would you struggle? Go into all the world and preach the gospel. What is that? What's the gospel message? Do you know that? Believe you've got it down pretty solidly, pretty plainly, pretty clearly? We should be well-equipped. Amen? Because God tells us all to go and preach. Go and preach. It's, it should go beyond God loves you or stop doing bad things. There's a little bit more to the gospel message. Jesus is coming back soon. There's a little bit more to the gospel message than that, isn't there? Yeah. Yep, there is. Those are... Those are uh, elements of the message. But we should be a people that are capable of giving a succinct presentation and, and if and when and to the extent that there might be questions, yeah, well prepared to present the gospel message to those that don't know or have questions or would be contentious. Right back to what the Bible has to say. You may believe that, but this is what the Bible has to say regarding the way of salvation. Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. The people ready to go and preach and actively doing so. And of course, in the parallel passage over in Matthew 28, he puts it a little bit differently, doesn't he? he uh, we read from verse 18. Jesus came and spoke to them saying, and I read from the New King James, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Well, the latter part of this uh, 20th verse, oh, we like that one. Jesus is with us, always with us, and never leave us or forsake us. He's with us to the end of the age. Praise God for it, so he is. But the first part of the verse speaks to all believers as well, doesn't it? He says, teaching them to observe. We're to make disciples and teach them. Are you, would you consider yourself somebody who knows enough of the word of God to be able to teach somebody else? Oh, I didn't ask if you, if you knew it better than everybody else that you know. No. But how well do you know it? Are you able to teach people what the Bible has to say? Are you able to teach fellow, fellow believers? Because here he's talking about teaching disciples, isn't he? Those, those that have come to know the Lord. Again, as parents, we should be very, very mindful of, of knowing enough of the word of God that we can instruct our children in the, in the truths of God's word. Amen? Amen. Sober responsibility. You fathers, train up your children. Bring up your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Husbands are to wash their wives with the water of the word. Got to know enough of the word to be able to do that. Amen? Amen. Bringing ministry, making, <clears throat> bringing teaching to the, to the disciples, those that have come to know Jesus. Can you teach the word of God? Young people? Hmm? How about we got some young people in here? Do you know the word of God well enough to teach others also? It's not to be, uh, the, the, the teaching is not reserved exclusively for uh, adults. Paul writes of Timothy having known the Holy Scriptures from childhood. Amen? 
The Holy Scriptures, which are able to make him wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. From childhood, he knew those. That's good training for children, that they could be able to teach. Not uncommon for our young people to have opportunities to, to bring instruction to their fellow young people. So if you're here this evening, think in terms of being one who is called of God to teach others also. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. There are plenty of occasions where as, as, as believers, not only among the young people, but among, among all of us, <clears throat> occasions where we see something that needs to be spoken to, doesn't look right, doesn't look good, not the way it should be done according to the word of God, step up, speak up, say so. Say something. Amen? Have the, the, the spiritual integrity, strength of character, courage to say something, to speak up and say what ought to be said. Speak the truth. Speak the truth in love, but speak it up. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. I'm with you always to the end of the age. First Timothy chapter 4. <clears throat> First Timothy chapter 4. In the first number of verses of this fourth chapter, Paul has given some specific instruction to Timothy how to address some, <clears throat> some matters that he would have before him. But verse 6, jump in with me at verse 6. He says, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, these truths that Paul has just laid out before him, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. So here you see how the Apostle Paul speaks to Timothy of the importance of him taking the things that he has learned and sowing them into the lives of others. If you put the brethren in remembrance of these things, these things, that these, these truths, these truths in which you have been nourished up, share them with others. You'll be a good minister of Jesus Christ in so doing. That's what the Lord expects of us. And that's what we're talking about this evening, isn't it? The saints are to be equipped to do the work of the ministry. We are to think that this is ministry that belongs to every one of us. Thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith. Anybody read a passage such as this and think, man, that's who I want to be. I want to be this before the Lord. I want to be used of God. I want to be uh, by God's grace and for his glory. I want to be effective in ministering the word of truth to other people. There's no, there's, no, uh, there's no need for any of us to be concerned about spiritual pride or putting self forward or up, up and above others. You know, the Bible says that, uh, that if you desire to, to be used of the Lord, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Be a good minister of Jesus Christ, putting the brethren in remembrance of these things, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, wherein to thou hast, hast attained. Colossians chapter 3. Should you study the word? Should you give careful and consistent attention to the word? Yes. Why? Because God expects you to be a good workman. God expects you to know what you believe, why you believe it, what, the, what he has to say on any number of given subjects, how life is to be lived, what life is about, who God is, who the devil is, what the nature of man is, sin is. In our culture, our world, the... the uh, the whole concept of, of sin and morality is, is altogether subjective, isn't it? Yeah, some would, would acknowledge there's right and wrong, but it's, it's totally subjective. Totally subjective in the, the minds of, of so many. And then there are plenty that would argue there is no such thing as absolute right and wrong. Punch them in the nose. And see if they still hold to that doctrine, Right? Punch them in the nose. They're going to tell you that was 
Wrong. <laughs> yeah. The folly of man. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. For what reason? So that you can just joy and delight in how good, how awesome God is, how mighty and majestic are his ways? Hmm? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. What's it say next? Teaching and admonishing one another. Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Well, you are at liberty before the Lord to, yes, delight yourself in the riches of his word as he reveals his, his majesty, his beauty, his splendor, his, his all of, you know, it, just an unfolding of his, his um, glorious attributes as you fellowship with him and you read these words of life. You can't help but have your, your spirit lifted and your, your, your heart uh, uh, rejoices as you consider the glory and greatness might and majesty of God. But such revelations of God to us are not just to give us goosebumps and to fill us with a sense of awe. They do that, but not just that. Amen? Knowing God's greatness, we will, yes, teach and admonish one another. When the word of Christ dwells in us richly, we're going to be, it's going to be flowing forth from us. We'll be speaking words that are good to the use of edifying. We'll be singing with, with grace in our hearts to the Lord. We'll be blessing the Lord, and that edifies. When your heart is filled with, with truth and light in life, it comes on out. Can't help but. This is a passage of Scripture that just generally, it just speaks to us of, of, uh, of the abundance of life that God puts in us springing forth from us. You know God according to his word. You grow stronger. You have more of the character of Jesus Christ in you. <clears throat> Less of, of self, more of Jesus. And it can't help but come out. As we teach and admonish and sing to ourselves and to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. This is expected of us. This isn't just for somebody that's feeling particularly happy and gay in Jesus. No, God expects us to have his word dwell in us richly. That we would be able to teach and admonish one another. Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in our hearts to the Lord. Go with me back over to the 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Look with me down, if you would, to verse 24. A servant of the Lord must not strive. King James, I've got it from the new King James. Must not quarrel. So, any servants of God here this evening? We like to humbly consider ourselves just servant of God. Belong to him, purchased with his blood, not my own. Amen? Just a servant of the Most High God. Well, here's some instruction for servants of God. The servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle unto all men. What's it say next? Able to teach. Apt to teach. Able to teach. Amen? The servant of the Lord... The servant of God should be able to teach. Patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Captives need to be set free. Truthful will do the job if they have ears to hear. How are they going to hear? You're going to tell them. You're going to gently, meekly, in humility, skillfully tell them the truth. That they can recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. They're opposing themselves. Haven't you found yourself on, uh, sadly, all too many occasions over the years, I guess we'd have to say. The longer you walk with the Lord, the more you have occasion to, 
talk with people who oppose themselves, Christian people, professing Christians, walking contrary to the word of God. Talking with one here recently, you know, they were telling of, uh, of things that they are thinking about doing, ways in which they're intending to change here and there. And I've heard that from, from them just numerous times over the years. Thinking about changing, doing this, doing that. And the Bible that says that he that knows to do good doesn't do it. I mean, it's sin. Not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers. The doers. So you know to do good. You can have heard, know, quote the passages of Scripture, but if you're not doing it, those people are opposing themselves. The person who is a hearer and not a doer is deceived. They think they're right because they know what the Bible has to say. Oh, yes, I know that's what I should be doing. Yep, I know that's what the Bible has to say. I know that's what the word of God is for me. And they're not doing it. They're deceived. They, almost, they try to convince themselves that they're right with God because they know what they should be doing. I know I'm not doing it, but I know what I should be doing, so I'm okay. They're deceived. Says James, by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, this passage here in... 2 Timothy 2 tells us that we're going to run into folks like that. They are opposing themselves. And we are to be able to teach in the humility or, or meekness, gentleness, correcting those that are in opposition. If God will grant them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. You prepared to do that? Do you think in terms of growing in your walk with the Lord so that you would be well able to bring this kind of ministry to people that are out of the way? God wants us to be so skilled, doesn't he? He wants us to know the word of God well enough to be able to bring correction to people who are opposing themselves. I believe plainly this is, this is talking to fellow Christians. People who have professed a faith and trust in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But they're off course. Their, their doctrine isn't sound. Their practice isn't consistent with the word of God. They're out of the way. They're opposing themselves. Our prayer and our trust and our ministry is directed towards seeing them recover out of the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. The servant of the Lord is to be able to teach. Amen? Amen. How about 1 Peter chapter 3? Why the word? Why do you believe that your, your sins are forgiven? Sin's a serious business before a holy God. Why do you believe that you can stand before God and, and know that your sins are forgiven? I hope everyone here could give plenty of, of reference from the scripture to that subject. You ought to be able to. Do you know why you believe what you believe? Hmm? The Bible tells you, I know Jesus loves you, this you know, because the Bible tells you. How about tell me where it says that? <laughs> huh? Get a little bit more specific. All right? That's the kind of, of uh, preparation that we should give attention to. Preparation of, our, of our, our, our minds, our hearts, our souls. From 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, we read, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Ready always. Why do you believe you're going to heaven? Why do you think you're right with God? You know, you're no better than I am. You sin. You think you're just a holier than I am? Why, why should you go to heaven and I don't go to heaven? You tell them what the Bible has to say regarding your source of hope. Amen? 
It's not because of the, the good that you've done that you're getting into heaven. You know that. It's not by your good intentions or your good deeds. You've placed your trust in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. You called upon the name of the Lord for forgiveness of your sins and the salvation of your soul. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you tell that person, you've done so. You tell them that the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. And that is the way you have come to the Lord. You, you believe that as you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin. You're saved by grace through faith. And that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. You tell them the basis for your belief. How you find yourself reconciled to God. Be ready always to give an answer. Amen? If we're going to be able to give an answer, we need to know what the Bible has to say on the subject. Why do you believe you're right with God? What, what caused you to have this hope in you that God's coming back one day? Take you with him home. It's because Jesus says, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will surely come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. That's why you have that hope. Amen? Because the Bible records Jesus' words having said he's coming again to receive you unto himself. That where he is, there you may be also. You have that hope. Amen? And plenty of other verses that speak of a, the blessed hope of the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? A hope which anchors the soul. Amen? Sure and steadfast. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you. And of course, the answer comes from your heart of hearts where you just really, really, really believe that Jesus really loves you. Is that where that answer comes from? Answer comes from the Bible, the Word of God. It is written. That's the authority, isn't it? Why do you hold to the position? Why do you hold the beliefs that you hold? Because the Bible says them. The Bible teaches you these truths. The Bible is the source of our wisdom. Amen? It is the basis for our beliefs. <clears throat> In Acts 17, on this point, Acts 17, I read from verse 1. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica. This is Paul on one of his missionary journeys. Amen? Where was the synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, Acts 17, Paul was in the, it was his custom when he came to a town, if there was a Jewish synagogue, that's where he'd start out. You've read the book of Acts here recently. That's where he'd go. If there was a synagogue of the Jews. You remember, the, the Jews have been dispersed throughout the world, haven't they? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, James writes to the dispersed. Uh, Peter writes to the dispersed. The diaspora. The dispersed Jews throughout the world. Well, Paul's over in, in Greece or in Asia. And he goes to a, a, a town, and sure enough, there's a synagogue of the Jews. There's a place where the Jews would gather to read the word of God and to, to, to be taught the word of God. So Paul goes there, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. He reasons with them out of the scriptures, doesn't he? He talks with them... <clears throat> of what the scriptures have to say regarding the Messiah, Jesus Christ. He reasons with them out of the scripture. That's your authority, not your opinion. What do they say, your opinion and what? Uh, what's, what cost these days? What's a cup of coffee cost these days? Five, six bucks, right? Your opinion and five bucks will get you a cup of coffee, right? Six bucks? <laughs> Depends on what you're getting. If you want to get those uh, double triple, quadruple, grandes, or whatever they are. <clears throat> Out of the scriptures he reasoned with them, opening, alleging, alleging that Christ must needs have suffered, risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. 
So he reasoned with them from the scriptures. And similar passage over in Acts 28, this was his custom. This is, of course, the last book of Acts, last chapter in the book of Acts. Now he's in Rome, and he calls the Jews there in Rome. He's, he's under house arrest. But when they had appointed him a day, verse 23, many came to him at his lodging, to whom he explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both from the law of Moses and the prophets, from morning till evening. So he's reasoning with them from the Bible, isn't he? That's your authority. It is written, what saith the scripture? To the law and to the testimony. That's where we go. When we're talking with people, we're talking with them about what the Bible has to say. Not modern philosophy or, or conservative morality. No, what is written? What does the Bible have to say? And we should take this business real seriously. God does. Thankfully, somebody took this business seriously enough to share the gospel with us. And we came to be saved. Amen? They were capable workmen. And God wants each and every one of us to be able ministers of this gospel. Turn with me over to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Again, from the New King James Version. Let's read from verse 14. 2 Timothy 3, 14. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. It is God's intention that every one of us be thoroughly equipped for every good work. That equipping comes about through the word of God. All scripture is given so that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's why the scripture has been given. God gave you the Bible. God has given to us his word so that we could be thoroughly equipped to do every good work. All that he's got for us. We know the doctrine will bring reproof and rebuke and exhortation from the word. He speaks of here <clears throat> the <clears throat> profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The scripture is there valuable, useful. It is to be put into practice for these purposes, teaching doctrine, bringing reproof or correction, bringing instruction so that, so that we and those to whom we minister would be complete. God doesn't want uh, ill-equipped, lopsided. I mentioned, again, the instruction that we bring to the young people here in a, in a basketball camp. We don't just teach them dribbling, do we? No, we don't just teach them offense, do we? No, we don't just teach them uh, uh, rebounding, do we? No, we endeavor to teach the full range of basic skills, don't we? So that they could be complete ball players. You know, sometimes you play these pickup games and guys just want to play at one end of the court. <laughs> you guys have all, you all played those kinds of games, haven't you? Yep, guys just want to play at one end, not the other. Christians are to be complete in their preparation, in their ability to bring effective ministry, doing a good job across the board, thoroughly equipped for every good work. 
And that equipping comes from the word of God. All scripture is given for this purpose so that you and I could be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So <clears throat> you might think, well, I like soul winning. I like preaching the gospel and seeing people get saved or at least, you know, challenging them and witnessing to them. I like apologetics. I'll, you know, I'll, I've got an answer for all their questions. That's, that's great that you, you know, you've uh, gained some considerable familiarity with the passages of scripture that deal specifically with the need to be born again. But what if the, the, the you know, you, you get home from doing so and a family member is sick? Are you able to minister the word of God that pertains to the healing of our bodies? There's a quarrel among a couple brothers and sisters. One, one got ticked off at them. And, and are you uh, able to make peace? Challenge them to consider the, the selfishness, that there's no place to be given to, to bitterness or backbiting. Are you able to bring effective ministry there? Now I'm going to go witnessing some more. There's a need right there, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. And we're to be thoroughly furnished, well equipped for all good works. All good works. So that's why we read our whole Bibles, don't we? And look to put it all into practice. So that we are workmen who don't need to be ashamed. We can skillfully handle the word of truth and be equipped for, yes, whatever need we have before us, whatever the, the situation that we've encountered. God's glorified in that. And the, the saints uh, can draw on his grace, and the supply of his spirit, and the wisdom of his word to bring honor and glory to our God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. We'll finish there for this evening. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for all the truth and life and light there is in your word. Again, we thank you for the privilege of being workers together with you. It is a rich and wonderful blessing to be able to share truth with people, saved and unsaved. What a blessing to observe the, the life-giving power of your word, to bring conviction, to bring comfort, to bring strength and courage. We thank you, Holy Father, for your living word. Help us to be a people that give diligent and consistent attention to your word. Not just book learning, but application. Ministering the word to ourselves and to one another. That's why the scripture has been given, that we would be complete well equipped help us to approach you and our time with you in your word with that awareness O oh Lord God you're revealing yourself to us through your word and it does cause us to stand in awe and wonder we grow in our appreciation for the the depth of your plan the wisdom of your plan the, the beauty of the redemptive plan But help us to be mindful that we are in training as your servants, as workmen in your service. Help us, Father God, to view what you have to say to us from that perspective, that when you're teaching, You're bringing edification, instru instruction, comfort. Because you love us and care for us. And because you inspect, expect us to take the things that we've received from you and minister to them to others, oh Lord God. Thank you for your word, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll be sure and greet one another in the love of the Lord Jesus.
God's grace and peace go with you all.